EV Comply, simplifying your charge point installations. Hello you, thank you for listening to the EV Comply podcast. It's Friday the 18th of March. Let's see what's been going on this week. Big news this week. The Department for Transport has said it is working with industry to drive up standards. After a leaked audit report it commissioned found that almost a fifth of household electric vehicle charge points inspected across the UK could be dangerous for users. The report was compiled last summer by the Centre of Excellence for Low Carbon and Fuel Cell Technologies for the Office for Zero Emission Vehicles. Of all the new charge point installations carried out, only 32% were recorded as satisfactory. The findings prompted Transport Minister Rachel McLean to write to all installers registered on the scheme to warn them that if necessary, we will remove companies and individuals found to be performing unsafe installations from our schemes and inform their electrical trade associations of our decision. The email also read suggestions that electricians are continuing to carry out installations despite faulty supplies to the property. McLean also said there had been examples of poor wiring during the installations or deficiencies in the provision of residual current device protection. RCDs are designed to prevent EV owners from getting a fatal electric shock if they touch something live, such as a bare wire. It can also provide some protection against electrical fires, according to the charity Electrical Safety First. The DFT said that the homeowners and workplaces were immediately informed during the audit about any safety issues and they were instructed not to use their charge point. They were further instructed to contact the relevant installer to fix the safety issues identified. All the above highlights why it's so important to make sure that you are using a reputable company or individual to fit your charge point. Here's a nippy number for you. Fiat will confirm an Abarth performance variant of its electric 500 imminently ahead of a launch next year. This will be its first hot model since the Abarth 124 GT that was launched back in 2018. The model will mark the beginning of Abarth as an electric go-faster subdivision of Fiat. Other models will also receive the Abarth treatments on a case-by-case basis. Brand boss Oliver Francios told Autocar he expects to have between one and three Abarth models at any one time. Now, I don't know if you've ever been in a Fiat 500 Abarth, but they are quick as it is, let alone going electric. So that's going to be one nippy car, to say the very least. Jaguar Land Rover is developing an energy storage system unit using Second Life batteries from its electric vehicles. It has launched the off-grid battery energy storage system in partnership with power application supplier Pramac. The ESS will use lithium-ion battery cell batteries used in prototype and engineering test Jaguar I-PACE vehicles, its first electric SUV. The flagship system has a capacity of up to 125 kWh and can be portable or fixed. It's also charged from solar panels. Its battery system is linked to a bi-directional converter and the associated control management systems. It has Type 2 EV charge connections with dynamic control and up to 22 kWAC. In other news this week, Morales Data has secured 1.7 million in seed funding to accelerate the growth of its electric vehicle charging platform, Fuse, creating more than 30 jobs across the business. The investment, led by Par Equity and backed by a syndicate of angel investors, led by entrepreneur Kevin Beals, will support the company's strategy to become the enterprise-level charge point management system of choice for fleets, workplaces, destinations and installers, as well as creating 30-plus further jobs at its Lancaster and Glasgow offices. The funding will enable Fuse to expand its sales and customer support operations, bolster its innovation program, accelerate the platform's product development roadmap and begin its planned international expansion. 
Could Starbucks make EV charging stations as ambiguous as Starbucks itself? Starbucks and Volvo are partnering to build out a public EV charging network starting this summer. The company announced this on Tuesday. The network will be limited in scope, just 15 Starbucks locations to start, but the open charging network means any EV driver will be able to charge and caffeinate about every 100 miles. Volvo will work with ChargePoint, an EV charging station manufacturer based in Campbell, to install 60 Volvo branded stations at locations in five states across a 1,350 mile route from Denver to Seattle, Starbucks' home city. Locations are about 100 miles apart. Installations of the charging stations is expected to be completed by the end of the year. The company said in the announcement they're very excited and should this work well, there's no reason why it can't be rolled out globally. Chinese carmaker MG says it has sold 200 of its refreshed 2022 MG ZS EVs in the first week on sale, signaling the growing appetite for more affordable electric vehicles in Australia. In fact, it is also one of a few now eligible for the new Queensland EV rebate that was introduced on Wednesday. Keeping on the topic of car manufacturers, BMW has teased us with some cryptic press shots surrounding its upcoming all-electric sedan, the i7. It looks like we could be seeing a similar elongated grille to that of the BMW iX. Now, I'm not sure whether that's a good thing. I think a lot of people either loved it or loathed it. It definitely does divide people. We can also catch a glimpse of the massive 31-inch 8K ultra-wide screen that will keep passengers in the back entertained. BMW says the screen transforms the rear seats into an exclusive private cinema lounge where passengers can select their personal entertainment program from a diverse range of streaming offers and enjoy watching it whilst driving in BMW's new top-of-the-range models. Sounds very snazzy and they're definitely selling it as luxury with all that wording. Independent forecourt operator Motor Fuel Group has announced plans to build an EV charging hub at the Great Western Retail Park in Glasgow. The new site, featuring eight 150-kilowatt ultra-rapid chargers and an all-weather canopy, will be situated adjacent to the Starbucks in the park's car park, and it is expected to open this year. Great Western Retail Park is prominently located on the A82, which is one of the main routes into the city centre. It is 270,000 square feet, with a tenant lineup that includes B&Q, Sainsbury's and Curry's. The chargers will offer motorists 100-mile range in about 10 minutes, subject to the charging capability of individual car batteries. Since 2020, more than 5,000 petrol and diesel fueling stations have closed in the UK. With Shell's recent conversion of its Fulham fueling station to the first of its kind electric charging hub, we wonder if this is the way forward. There has been a 110% rise in UK drivers buying EVs between 2020 and 2021. Similar growth is also seen in other markets. The evidence points towards an electrified future, one that suggests this could be the beginning of the end for traditional fuel stations. The benefit of retrofitting fuel stations to charging hubs is pretty straightforward. By using petrol stations' existing infrastructure, forecourts and retailers are able to avoid investments in electricity upgrades and to be cost-efficient. In fact, they can use EV charging as an additional revenue stream to drive footfall into their retail shops on top of charging services. What's more, charging hubs can help forecourts mitigate unpredictable price spikes associated with renewable energy by balancing the need for more electricity and the strain on power grids. This energy congestion will cause the cost of electricity delivered to potentially increase by 20% in 2050 when building out renewable power assets and grid infrastructure. Hence why pivoting towards charging hubs allows for cost-saving practices by using existing locations whilst also serving customers' growing needs. Last year, Michelin and Goodyear released their first tyres, designed exclusively for electric vehicles. Now another big player is joining the game. 
Pirelli has announced its own special EV tyre also, called the P0 All Season Plus Elect. What a name! But why are all these manufacturers exclusively focusing on EV tyres? Well, first off, it's about the weight. Because of the battery, EVs generally weigh more than traditional ICE cars. Then comes another characteristic that EV drivers know and love, and that, of course, is the instant torque and acceleration. The combination of these elements wears tyres down much faster, which in turn increases rolling resistance and reduces efficiency as well as range. EV tyres need to provide low rolling resistance, improved wear resistance, and increased traction and road grip. And this requires some extra work on the tyre's tread. For instance, the centre part of the Michelin's EV tyre tread pattern uses a high stiffness rubber compound. Goodyear created its tyre with an asymmetric tread pattern and specialised tread compound for its EV tyres, and Pirelli has developed a new formulation, so they say. The three companies have also focused on adding to the EV's noiseless value because, of course, an EV is silent, and the last thing you want to be hearing is the tyres. The best EV home charger you can buy in 2022 was won by Podpoint Solo 3 for the best home charger for public network integration. They price from £799, including installation. Podpoint is one of the largest established commercial charge point providers, and it finally brought its charging expertise to homes at the end of 2021. Charging communities like CoCharger and Just Charge provide platforms so you can rent your charge point out, Airbnb style, to other EV drivers and monetize your new assets. So if you are thinking about getting an EV charger at home, that's possibly something to consider too. You, my good friend, are now in the EV know with our latest EV Comply Roundup. I'll be back on Friday, keeping you in the loop. Until then, from everybody here, you have a fantastic weekend. Thank <laughs> you.